how much does Jason Kelly expect Ginkgo Bioworks will accumulate in completing uh, the renovations or you know even getting the new Biofab 1 facility up and running? I think that probably this is at least a figure that I hope uh, Jason and Mark will provide more color to us and more detail to us on in terms of what they're expecting to continue uh, contributing on the order of millions of dollars to um, in the in the upcoming quarters to the middle of the next year in 2025 and um, the fact that they mentioned that um, they spent seven million on just still getting the new biofab one facility up and running right across the street which is right across the street from their main uh, foundry facility that's in Boston it's really telling about the fact that there's still a lot of gaps with uh, different technology and automation solutions that Jason Kelly and Mark Dimitrik have been talking about with regards to synthetic biology. And I think that that's kind of funny because the automation and robotics that they're really looking to incorporate in the lab, it's a significantly level lower of autonomy than say the autonomy that people have been futurist people like the people at ARK Invest and other types of investment companies have been talking about with regards to incorporating robots and say either restaurants or other types of public areas uh, which many type of people attribute um, attribute to the fact that uh, would cause many people to lose their jobs in the future and I think that eventually once the technology of robotics and autonomy gets to that point it could have that very negative type of impact in terms of you know significantly restructuring the workforce in different types of you know uh, areas where uh, that people use publicly every day but in terms of the lab Jason adopting robotic solutions and robotic technologies in the lab it's a much more narrow niche type of circumstance for using robotics because it's either that the robots are tasked with pipetting or increasing the throughput of different types of experiments and workflows that you guys always talk about in synthetic biology like PCR, qPCR and when you're looking at such polymerase change reactions or other types of reactions in synthetic biology there are a lot more difficulties Jason rather than looking at how to just increase the throughput so that you can maybe be able to screen more compounds in different types of molecular screens and a lot of it Jason unfortunately has to do with the gaps in robotics because I kind of seem to no offense Jason but but like I kind of seem to take a lot of the claims that you make and you and Mark make with regards to robotics with a lot of skepticism maybe more skepticism than I should honestly but I just find a lot of you know a lot of uh, concerning points or questionable components to claims that you guys have made about robotics and being able to scale this up effectively in the uh, biofab one facility or in other types of aspects of the foundry because you really need a lot more through not only do you need a lot more throughput than whatever you're currently exercising but you also need to be able to scale up and make fundamental contributions to robotics technologies which it's still difficult for you guys to do even on the very narrow scale and narrow application in the lab because we need a lot more sophisticated generalized artificial intelligence for making up for allowing for robots to say function normally and competently in restaurants or other types of public spheres and the fact that you guys are still thinking about ways to enhance your robotics capabilities from the Zymergen racks which in my in my opinion I think that those racks are next to useless because the fact that you guys had spent so much time talking about how you had customized the size of the racks and introduced different components which would allow ginkgo scientists and ginkgo engineers to more easily and uh, more easily automate onboarding of assays from customers like that's a very narrow circumstance Jason and I don't really think that introducing additional automation in the early steps of the workload for your foundry is really going to make a significant change because if you guys use the foundry like how you've been talking about how you expect also to make use of your biofab one facility it doesn't really seem that 
you guys are going to be able to make the significant changes in increases to the throughput by just using the types of robots or Zymogen racks that you guys have been mentioning and talking about for months while you guys have burned hundreds of millions of dollars. So I really hope that there can be maybe some type of difference in how you expect to incorporate robotics in your Biofab 1 facility that you're going to tell us about more in terms of the future updates, uh, the future quarterly updates for your company. And um, I just really think that what's the point of continuing to tout this uh, platform that you guys are offering if there are still years away of development in terms of robotics and other types of fundamental technologies that you're going to use that you still have to waste and burn on the order of millions of dollars for because basically you guys had to if you guys didn't have to burn all of this money that you're thinking about using for the biofab one facility because if your technology was already at peak capacity and already up where it should be so to say in terms of the foundry then you guys could have actually kept a lot of your current employees that you had to let go instead of having to issue a bunch of blanket statements and very generic statements at that in terms of who you had to let go and what you're expecting uh how this would positively impact uh, the future of Ginkgo Bioworks. Basically, because you guys only spent like 12 million on severance for the mass layoff, which it's still a lot of money, you guys could have kept that if you just didn't have to spend at least the 7 million in the first quarter. It's a very comparable size of money given the hundreds of millions of dollars that you guys have burned, Jason. So I don't know. It's just like a lot of things that you guys do, you, you provide all these types of reasons and motivations for being able to scale up synthetic biology or, or what type of potential positive impact you would expect for it to have on your foundry but really I don't see any of these types of or very few of these types of positive changes or benefits that you guys have mentioned um, for your acquisitions or other aspects of how you run your business and you know if there is hypothetically speaking some really significant increase in the revenue or there's a you know significant increase in productivity of your next generation biofab one facility while your operating expenses significantly decrease i don't really see any type of justification for how you made use of investors hard-earned money that they used to even get your company to this point as well as the efforts from other venture capitalists who are really trying to big bet big on synthetic biology